straight away gone. You are some sort of prophet, Jake Spawn Tiberi. The Cho'Gath also gone here on the side of Royal Club. LeBlanc going to be answered here as well. Korn not going to be taking that one to the rift. And it looks like we're having a fairly mid-aimed banning phase going through for both sides after that Janna has hit the bench. Yeah, Ooh, Thresh, Thresh well. actually being banned away from Lamb, so they don't want that to be the first pick that comes through. Thresh, of course, very ambiguous, doesn't give much away about a team comp, can play pick, can play team fight, so do like that one being taken away, although anytime you see Thresh being banned by Starhorn Royal Club, you do feel a little bit sad for Zero. Yeah, well, it's true, and they're banning it away from themselves, and that just makes it even more sad for Zero. You can imagine he's probably sitting there pretty mad at Godlike at this stage, but Zero showed that he's more than happy to pick up Disengage. Do you think that this means Starhorn pretty keen on picking up that Nami? And what do you think if Lamb goes back to the likes of his Leona? Yeah, it certainly can go towards the Nami. Leona is a very good matchup mm -hmm. against Nami, of course, in the lane. But we've seen that they've been dodging that further and further. And actually, Rek'Sai gets thrown out there. So the victor is available. The Ari matchup is the potential. But in the top lane... Maybe the Nah, maybe the Rengar still standing out there, and it looks like they are going to lock in Rengar. Lots of priority on that Rengar pick. Wanting to pick it away from Insect, wanting to pick it up here for MLXG as well, who's played his last three games on that champion. Sort of just doesn't want to have to think about playing anything else, just more than happy to stay in that kitty mindset and just pounce on some people. Godlike and Insect now. We'll see what they decide to take because, of course, Maokai is still available. There are so many top lane picks, you know, apart from the Lissandra and Cho'Gath top, which... Not where it's aimed, of course. That's aimed at Assassin and Insec. And <laughs> Godlike both going to pick up the supports we were talking about. Yeah, so they're going towards a Hecker and pick up potentially. And actually, they go for a heavy engage composition here. Wow. Zero going with Leona. And this is a much more mid game focused team than we would have maybe expected to come out of Starhorn Royal Club. No, but you can see Insec, he's actually got Ignite now as well. So he might be playing in that bottom lane. He's just swapped over to Smart, so we yes. don't even have to entertain that thought. As we <laughs> see Assassin hovering the Ari here. Want to take that one away from Corn, of course, still extremely strong. And Ooh. This could be dangerous, picking up a late-game scaling AD carry against Name. Yeah, and taking, scrap that, taking Callista into Leona is suicide. Just absolutely devastating in a 2v2 laner f laning phase, and there's just too much lockdown CC that comes through, but they've done it. They're doing it. They're not scared at all. And not to mention the fact that there's a Hecarim there. And I mean, yeah, you can use a Martial Poise to jump around, but you can't jump like the entire screen, which is what his ultimate can do. It's just ridiculous. So we'll see whether Lucian can have sort of that god game on Callista. And we were mentioning Lucian there before. Name's thinking about it. They certainly are. And Korn back to Orianna. This would be a throwback. This is how Starhorn Royal Club used to play when they had Uzi on the lineup. Ooh, the Corky's still a very strong lane bully coming through, so might be looking for it, but... <laughs> uh, oh, he's gone back to it. I wasn't actually expecting that one to come through, and it is going to be Godlike locking in that tree for the top lane, and that's Insec on the Hecarim. So very mixed support came through from uh, the Hecarim jungle. He had the first game, and it was a nightmare, and we thought he maybe would have pocketed it, but yep. Insec very stubborn. Got back in there, and it really did perform much better, th uh, better the second time around. And he went off. He got a triple kill on the bottom lane, I believe, with a nicely timed yeah. teleport. And going to go back to that one again. Oh, my goodness. And it looks like we're going to have King maybe doing some sort of juggalista comp. Potentially coming through. A few bit of shielding coming down there. Of course, it is a little bit of a stretch to call it one of those. But we've been seeing variations on this sort of get behind the hyper carry. But... This is Wushin taking on the king of hyper carries. And I mean, yeah, he might be on Corky, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we've seen Corky's go off in the late game by the likes of Candy. Of course, lots of Corky players here in China. Yeah, we certainly have. This is a lot of magic damage, however, on the side of Starhorn's lineup. And you see that they've got the Black Shield. They've got the Lulu to make everyone a little bit more tanky. So it will be hard to shred through them late game. But it is actually the Oriana that's picked up. So you have some very good ball delivery systems coming oh, through yeah. here. You've got the likes of the Maokai. You've got the Hecarim. Even Zero is he a fantastic three. target to be able to throw something on. And Korn, he's gone back to his old school champion. We played a lot of Oriana. And against the likes of Ari, does do fairly well in the lane. Okay. Um, is Oriana's just fantastic at dealing with any assassins, really. And... I was going to say that it was a skill matchup. Uh, <laughs> I'm not on the skill matchup hype train for Ari. I think there are some lanes that Ari straight out loses. Really? Like Annie? Is Annie one of them? Annie, old school Fizz, used to straight up beat Ari. Oh, yeah. That's probably true. 
old school Fizz was pretty dumb though, let's be honest. Sky taking on Godlike here though in the top lane and it's a little bit of a um, bit of a mana pick up here. Picking that Lulu into Godlike was of course one of his most favored champions when he was playing for LMQ. Yeah, it certainly was. Malka actually does fairly well against Lulu in the early game as well. Shrub's a lot better and we see the mid game matchup. That's what we were talking about, the Ari versus Orianna. Korn has seen probably every variant of the Orianna matchup, so oh, not expecting yeah. it to be too much. And Wushin versus Name with the Kalista versus Corky. And we would have expected that to be going in the opposite direction here as far as the scaling goes, but it's going to be Name on a little bit more of a mid-game flavor and Zero picking up the, um, the Leona here as well, and that is just a terrifying lane if they were ever going to attempt a 2v2. Yeah, it's one of the better bully lanes. It certainly is, but ladies and gentlemen, let's get onto the Rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with King taking on Starhorn Royal Club for our first best of two of the night. And we'll see whether Name is going to rock it onto the rift with this Corky now. It's sort of not the same flavor as normal, but King already starting to group up. Yeah, and they've thrown out their Sentinel there to try and spot out Insect. And they've got the deep vision. Insect gets one down as well, but it oh, will be taken away. So good reaction times there. Very good at hitting their attack move, and they will get the deep wards they're looking for. Yeah, and no vision to be available here for Royal Club, but they know that there are at least four members there as this Rengar was able to spot them out. You can see Godlike already answering with some early vision. You can see, oh, actually in the bottom lane as well. Name and Zero hanging out. Yeah, so the reason behind that is Corky Leona is m a much stronger lane. Oh, yeah. Than the Callista as well as the Morgana. So they're looking to see if maybe they can dodge the uh, 1v1. Lulu does fine, especially if you give her a support. She actually lanes pretty well, um, has a lot of CC. The shields help out. So I don't think they want to go head to head into this lane. Although, as we said, Name m maybe historically has struggled in some lanes. Um, does have the definite better lane right now. Yeah, and um, one thing that we sort of haven't really spoken about is the fact that the Lulu was opted in for, I think, after the Corky was picked up. And. Uh, Sort of Corky, not very many tank busting abilities, and they decided to put a Lulu there in the top lane. What do you think the thinking is there? Yeah, so certainly going in uh, with the idea of being able to augment, it's more of a supportive pick, and you make someone else a tank, and there are some people that can dive into the lineup. I'm looking at the likes of MLXG. Even the Ari, when she goes forward, can provide someone to be a little bit more tanky, so don't really necessarily mind it. And they actually have gone standard in a 2v2 lane, trying to get some harass down onto zero early. Yeah, and actually the Soul Mark doing quite a bit of work there under Zero. Already chunked out a fair bit from Wushin and Lamb just auto-attacking. Of course, that percent health damage very, very strong. Phosphorus Storm not going to find its mark as the Sentinel's just sort of parading around over the top side and just farming it out here. But this lane could get explosive very quickly, and we haven't hit level 2 yet. And we've seen the power of Callista as soon as she hits level 2, but... Corky's, of course, no slouch either. Yeah, it certainly is. And they do much better when they have all three skills. Although, as soon as you see level two come through, the zone comes up because they did get it first. But both uh, Leona as well as Corky, when they have all of their abilities, when they have that level three rank, are just such a terror to have to deal with in lane. Leona's so inherently tanky, so much CC that comes out. And they swap targets and burst Black Shield, more importantly. It makes Leona a little bit less... Uh, Morgana a little bit less effective. Yeah, and it's going to be all up to Lamb to really time that one as best as possible. Like, as soon as the Zenith Blade lands to, in order to dodge that Shield of Daybreak, because if there's a stray Phosphorus Bomb that lands, that Black Shield's going to do nothing. Yeah, exactly right. So what they will do, they'll look to swap targets, they'll look to maybe burst through it with all the magic damage that can come through. And you see in this bottom lane, it's just a farm fest with Corky pushing in very heavily. And he's going to be able to do this against Callista, of course, before she manages to build up any sort of AoE, which is going to be in the likes of a Hurricane if he decides to go for it. But we've seen Callista's sort of opt for a whole lot of different things in this build, and sort of Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirster, and Blade of the Ruin Kings happened. I mean, doesn't necessarily have to be that AoE build. Yeah, it certainly doesn't. And you see Nama actually taking a lot of damage right now in the lane, so he hasn't used his potion yet, but does have to back away, can't continue that pressure. Lane is reversing, which may give Zero his opening to engage if he so chooses. Well, this is what I really like about Callista lanes that have a range support in them, though, because you can really make use of that Sentinel passive, really getting that extra percent health damage. 
and that starts to stack up. Yeah, it certainly does start to stack up, but the danger here is that they've just got that much burst potential as junglers finish their first jungle route at about 4 minutes 25. Now looking for some ganks. Um, it does start to stack up, but the danger is the fact that Cork Leona just do so much burst damage that they turn trades very quickly if they get an opening. Yeah, so it sort of doesn't even really matter about poke. They're just going to go in, and then you're going to die. Insect looking for something in the top lane, whereas in the bottom lane, MLXG sort of hunting around here. You can see the horse MLXG has actually is gone in. in, potentially in the bottom lane as well. Yeah, actually jumping through. Oh, the Dark Binding lands there! Stuff flashes to come down. Immediately exhausted is Name, but Zero is taking so much damage. The Rend hasn't come through just yet. Wuxia needs to be able to press E, but doesn't quite find it. Insect teleported in just to save his bottom lane. But King almost managing that first hero kill in the bottom lane. Zero played that play so good. He actually flashed in front of the empowered bowler to save Name's life there with a very heads up play. Still My had his goodness. W on. So that was all on Zero. Absolutely turned that gank. Otherwise, it would have been a definite first blood. Very, very smart play coming through from the Korean support. Yeah, we were talking about Zero being an incredible peeling support. That's sort of like he flashed on top of him in order to peel off the CC that was on Name. So that that's how you exactly know what that term means, ladies and gentlemen. I've learned something here today. Sky, now going to just be continuing to farm in the top side. Didn't actually need to do anything as far as that gank was concerned. So nothing really lost or gained, but King... Managed to hang around in this bottom lane and pick up some extra farm. Yeah, so they've grabbed themselves a 10 CS advantage against maybe a very strong lane opponent. So that is definitely in favor of King at the moment. Starhorn would have thought that they could win this. And MLXG, he's been a lot more active at this moment. Uh, Insect did have to react to the last gank with his teleport. And he's up in the top lane now looking to maybe dive godlike. Yeah, and Godlike already taken a whole lot of harass, and actually level 6 has been hit here by Sky. A Assassin's coming up as well. This could be a very dead tree. He's been corralled under the tower here as well. The ultimate isn't going to be enough. MLXG, Sky actually going to be the one tanking up the turret. Doesn't find the last auto attack from it, and the tree's going to die for first blood. Yeah, and that was a very well-timed gank. Rengar showing himself out of that brush, forced Godlike back under the turret, even though Assassin wasn't there exactly in the right amount of time and the kill goes over to the mid lane so even though corn doing a very nice job of trading cs here will be a kill down now and needs to be careful of all the burst potential that will come out of ari and you can see actually wushin decided to go with that recurve bow as his first buy in response to the pieces of a phage here from name so wants to get that hurricane very early to answer the push. Yeah, don't really necessarily agree with that one. Think he needs a little bit of sustain because he will be chunked out in this lane. And of course, Vamp Scepter is just such a good item to sit on. If you are a Callista, you want to be auto attacking that wave to push it up. So maybe a little bit of a greedy purchase coming through here. Not really itemizing for the lane, but itemizing for the pushing power and see if they can make uh, them pay in it in the bottom lane for Starhorn Royal Club. Is it almost like they're conceding it a little bit? Sort of like just saying, okay, we're going to sit back as much as possible. Although they're playing very far forward at this stage. Yeah, they certainly are. And as soon as that level six comes through, I think there is a very big danger of this lane deteriorating rapidly. We see that they're still able to fight their way back into the CS margin, even though they were sent back by uh, the bottom lane. So very nicely done there to be able to equalize CS. And Zero doing a great job of zoning off creeps with just his presence on Leona. Yeah, and he's very tanky here as well. Does have that ruby crystal on top of everything else. And you can see, just looking strong. Just looking tough there, it's hanging out so that Wushin can't get too much of the CS freely. But now, of course, the laning phase is not really where he cares about. He wants to be just in the right positions in these team fights in the late game. We haven't really seen exactly how he's going to be playing it out on this Corky just yet, just because this isn't his time to shine on the map. No, it certainly isn't. And we see actually Korn starting to pick up some jungle camps for himself. So he's gone into power farming mode on this Orianna. And he's built himself up a very good CS advantage in that mid lane off the back of the roam. Wasn't able to follow because he was shopping. And he has also elected for a chalice build. So see if he goes to the second Doran's ring to get the mana sustain going on throughout the landing phase. And scaling up nicely into kind of... Oriana needs those three items to be the damage threat, but just is so annoying with the persistent 
uh, presence of her shields with the speed yeah. ups that, uh, and the zoning presence of that shockwave that allows her to, even without such a high burst damage mage like the uh, Ari will be in the mid game, will still be very, very competitive. Yeah, that being said, we've seen sort of these Orianas not reach the point that they need to at the right times here as well. Sort of needs to have that Ravidan's death cap after the Athenes to be effective, to have his abilities do any damage as MLXG pays a little visit into this bottom side, but doesn't quite find anything there. Yeah, that was the Rengar ultimate actually used. And we see mid lane continuing to shove in, but Korn doesn't really mind. And I think that what you're saying is correct. They need to have the Rabadon's Athenes to be able to do damage to the Squishy. They really need the Void Staff after that to do meaningful damage in team fights. But it's all about the shield. It's all about keeping Name safe. The control that the Shockwave will bring to the team fight and being able to catch Wuxian out there, add some burst damage to be able to chunk him out along with uh, the Hecarim and Maokai pickup. So I think that facilitated in the team fight as a very nice Phosphorus Bomb comes through, cleans up the back wave as well as doing a lot of damage to Wuxian. And I think that they have put together some winning ingredients at about the 30 minute mark, which is where they need to make it count. Okay, so the important part is making sure as Sky actually getting aggressed on here by Godlike, doing a whole lot of damage to this little Lulu. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see that sooner from Godlike. He's actually getting shoved around in this lane. And normally Maokai, as we said, does relatively well against the likes of the Lulu pickup. Is, of course, ranged for Lulu, but you can just sit there, W onto her, and do a lot of surprising damage early game as we see Insects snuck into this bottom line. Might be going in. Oh, the Solar Flare lands beautifully onto Wuxian. Backshield a little bit too late, and Insect going to pick up that kill. Lamb also in trouble. The Flash from Name Soul Shackles. Not going to find the stun, and Name just casually strolls out of the way of that turret. Yeah, and perfect kill distribution as well. One onto Insect, rewarding him with his gank, and the AD carry also able to pick that one up. They'll rotate into an early dragon as well now, and that's very good news. Starting to pick on this Callista lane. We said it would go a little bit differently once the level 6 came through, and that was just beautiful execution. Yeah, just fantastic solo flare. As Assassin, he's dived into the pit here as well. Zero is burning down from that ignite. Assassin is going to escape, and still going to be losing the dragon here as well, but nice attempt. Yeah, it does have to burn the summoner spell, though. Did get Zero's flash in response, but that was just Korn providing a good command protect to keep him alive, and... That will mean first objective, meaningful objective of the game goes over to Starhorn Royal Club and they have an early advantage. Ooh, and actually it's not going to be the rush of the um, the Hurricane here as well. Woosh actually just, or Woosh decides to pick up the BF Sword. Yeah, so Woosh going with the BF Sword there, making sure that he has competitive damage in these trades because the thing about Corky and why it doesn't suit to go the Hurricane build is Corky only wants to get the Phosphorus Bomb auto attack off and then will leave as, wow, heads up play no ward whatsoever there and completely had the read on what MLXG was trying to do with that Rengar ultimate. Yeah, just cleared out the way, of course. Had no mana left, did Korn, but... Didn't stick around for the cannon creep. Didn't get over Whoa, greedy. was it the cannon creep? Yep. Oh gosh, I normally notice every cannon creep so I think the most important things on the map, but not this time. Thankfully, Korn gave that one up. They are going to hard push in response, however. So, yeah, back to the Hurricane build. You need to be able to trade with just an auto attack as well as the Ren coming through. And, of course, Ren does stack up very nicely with AD. So that's the reason behind going the BF Sword is apart from the whole Hurricane. We'll still manage to pick up the Bloodthirster Hurricane combo as the first yep. two meaningful items. But just a different, uh, different ordering because it's not going to be this consistent, long, drawn-out fight. Oh, zero. Actually going to get caught out here just a little bit. Beautiful Solar Flare under Wuxian, though, just for a bit of disengage. And Name going to throw a rocket in there as well. But that's exactly what we were talking about. You saw the Black Shield come through. Sunlight plus one rocket bursts the Black Shield. So there is no way to stop the CC that will come through from zero. They will always be able to get off the full combo just because of the mixed damage that comes through from Corky. Yeah, until Lamb builds up about 400 AP, right? Make sure that shield's as large as possible. Okay, that's probably not going to happen. So we'll see how this one's going to work out and what the use of this Black Shield's going to be because Lamb's going to have to be very intelligent, of course. It didn't last very long at all after that Solar Flare went down in the bottom lane in order to start those first couple of kills here for the bottom lane of Royal Club. And so far, they're just playing it out beautifully. Yeah, they certainly are. And they've got a little bit of damage onto that bottom turret as well. Nice big wave here. So they'll be able to continue their assault there. Lamb trying to look menacing. And 
Nama actually playing very patiently, backing away from that one. Top lane is the danger area for Royal Club right now. Haven't done a fantastic ob job of getting Godlike going. He's 20 CS behind and did lose his turret 1v1 relatively early after that dive came through. So he's struggling at the moment. Has gone the roller build as well. So yeah. wants to... I can see exactly why they've done it because they're a late game team and they are just going to continue to scale and will have another meaningful threat in the top lane off the back of that roller. But is a little bit of a greedy buy because you don't get the early resistances that we're used to seeing through and will yeah. hurt him around the second and third dragon fights. Yeah, and it also means that right now, now that Sky has already shoved him all the way to his inner turret, it's not going to help him at all at this moment. I mean, that rower is not stacked up at all. It's like, at what, one or two at this stage? And Oh, Thrill the Hunt, though, has been popped here on this bottom side. MLXG wants to try and run in fight. There's the flash into the Empowered Bowler as well. Beautiful Dark Binding. And it all looks too easy here for King. Yeah, it certainly does. And they actually caught a bind, uh, charm in the mid lane as well as Korn. He actually pinged Assassin out. They knew the roam was coming through. So surprised they didn't understand the fact that MLXG was in that bottom lane. We'll pick up a kill against Name. And that gets the CS back in Wuxia's favor. Yeah, and in fact, two teleports were available here as well for Royal Club. Oh, he was dead before it even Yeah, well, that's the off. thing. So quick. But now they could use him potentially. Zero being dope has his full kit up. Yeah, that's actually the Zenith Blade to come through here as well. MLXG. Oh, had the Black Shield on him as well. The Dark Binding lands. Zero's going to die, but Wushin now just getting torn apart. Flashes out of the way. The Wild Growth is beautiful from Sky. There it is. Leon picks up the kill with the Puddle Corn. Oh, what happened, buddy? He jumped over the edge and just died instantly. Tower's going to fall down here as well. And King, this is the mid-game power they were looking for. Yeah, they force very hard and get everything they were looking for. Another outer turret. 3,000 gold. Now the advantage, but more importantly, three errant kills came through off the back of that. Name died, but they could have just forfeited the turret. Instead, try and make a heads-up play, get caught out, and lose another three members. Now five to two, and everyone's rolling on the side of King. Off the back of that, the Hurricanes built up. Nearly the Bloodthirster. 40% CDR on that top Lulu now. She's going to be so frustrating to deal with, and 0-0-4... MLXG having a very promising early game. Yeah, well, this is the thing that we talk about as well. Just a fantastic snowball jungler in this Rengar. Already has the Mercury's Treads, a giant's belt as well with his warrior enchanted jungle item. He's having a fantastic early, early stage of this game, and he's having so much more presence against a jungler that's got teleport. Yeah, very surprised he went with the giant's belt pickup, if we can just rest on that one very quickly. He's against a Maokai, against an Orianna, and the mixed damage coming out of a Corky. Locket mm. of the Iron Solari just looks like a much better early rush out of uh, Rengar. And I know I touch on it a lot, but it just synergizes so well with the Bone Tooth necklace. Get into the team fight, pop that. If you win the team fight, your necklace is already stacked because of all the assists that you get yeah, just true. from that item. It's a little bit like just being Sivir in general. Just brilliant for getting assists everywhere. Just pop that ultimate, yell a little bit, and then everyone says, oh, okay, cool, you can have part of my money. Sword of the Occult Sivir. Yeah, that's what's happening, my friend. But let's, let's, let's duo later, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> and we see Name now picking up the CS in the bottom lane. Ten seconds until the dragon is available, so they're looking to pick up the Scuttle Crab in that area, try and get some vision control. MLXJ, as you can see, on the other side of the map, so they if they go very quickly, we'll have a chance to burst this one down, but looks like they might want to fight instead. A push coming through into the mid lane, and Starhorn don't want to give up position on their turret. Yeah, King not actually caring about this dragon at all by the looks of things, sort of aiming around this mid lane, but now have grouped. Thrill of the Hunt is available yet again, as is the Wild Growth. That is very, very important. They can also throw Morgana right into the mix with that Fates Ball if they'd like to. Royal Club have started up the Dragon. They burst through this extremely quickly. King have made the call to maybe not contest. No, they're coming back in. Yeah, Lamb really wants to start something up. There's the Puddle here as well, but it is going to be Insect that secures the Dragon. Royal Club will see whether they can get out. Empowered Bowler on Insect here as well. Wushin going to get stunned once again, but not collapsed on as the Fates Call comes down. Godlike trying to be that tank in the front line. They don't actually pick up any kills. Oh, the Shockwave on the three members. There's the Wombo Combo from Royal Club. And King are melting in the face of it. Assassin Force to Flash. And that's a one for four. And Godlike dove onto two members with the ball on him. And Korn was patient enough to hold off. Got the perfect three-man shockwave on the back of that. And really decided the outcome of that team fight. Second dragon going over to Royal Club. They'll pick off a turret on the back of that as well. All of a sudden, gold completely even. And 
for a late game composition at 20 minutes to be back at square one, that's fantastic news. Yeah, that is just completely beautiful. I want to mention as well, Insect played that so patiently. He waited until that shockwave came through before using that onslaught of shadows. And we've seen Insect sort of go overly aggressive time and time again, but it hasn't been how he's been playing this weekend. Yeah, it certainly hasn't. He waited for the re-engage because he was the one that got chunked out. And that's the best thing about running a very tanky top and a very tanky jungle. If you are the one that loses all of your health, you can rely on Godlike, and he did. Godlike went in there with his ultimate, mitigated so much damage, was just in the Callista's face. And at this point, Callista not going to be able to deal with the big tanky Maokai. Yeah, it's true. Name actually doesn't want to get Empowered Bullet anymore. He's actually going to pick up the Mercury Treads as Assassin. Nice use of the uh, Black Shield here as well. Lay going to take the ultimate, but we should easily be able to secure that kill. Assassin gets it. Just an errant turn on his way through. And nothing Royal Club can do. So the picks are coming through quite nicely here for King, but Royal Club... Managing to sort of make it count in these team fights. Yeah, that was just a straight up misplay coming through from Zero. He thought his team was a little bit further in support. Actually engaged that one to try and save the turret. In the end, too much burst damage coming through. You can't rest, underestimate the power of this two item Aryan was made to pay. Yeah, it does now have a blasting wand as well as Assassin. So might be going towards that Rabbidon's death cap or even that Void Staff as his third item. Sort of an understandable pick up here just because of all of the Mercury threads, Spectres, Cows, everything coming through now as far as that magic resist is concerned. And Operation Camp Name definitely underway. Three members once again returning into this bottom lane, looking to help Wushin push up. And there's the ultimate again. Yeah, oh, there's the flash again as well as the Empowered Bowler comes through. Zero does manage to get a shield at Daybreak. He's trying to peel, but Wushin gets the rend. Zero now slowed down as well as MLXG going to jump out here, but you can see the double teleports come down. Beautiful wild growth in the back line as Sky's here as well. Wushin, there's going to be the shockwave. And as Korn comes in, really starting to solidify this one. King on the run. It is a one-for-one -one trade of the AD carries for Royal Club. They stop themselves from losing even more. And once again, the triple teleport coming through. Insect Godlike pull the trigger first and really need to point out the Hecarim Oriana combo here. Insect is just throwing himself at Woosh on this yeah. Callista, and every single time Korn has the uh, Shockwave available to ensure that Hecarim, even though a jungler, has the damage available to just be able to delete the Callista off the map. The ridiculous part of that is, though, is that if it's a Zenith Blade landing from zero, that's exactly the same story. He can just change his ball target and Twisted Advance on Godlike, it's the same type tool. They've got so many options to get the ball exactly where they want to. Yeah, they certainly do, and you can see it in the scoreline. Three of the eight deaths on King's lineup is Woosh. And now Godlike, he's been pincered out here. His over-aggression might even cost him a couple more kills. Yeah, potentially Liam trying to come up here. Does, of course, have those mobility boots. Looking for Insect. There's the Dark finding the immediate ultimate out from Assassin here as well. As Insect just gets launched on here from MLXG and King. Continue the picks. And it's sort of so beautiful seeing both of these comps actually working in what they want to do. Yeah, and MLXG popping the ultimate here, looking for another one. Yeah, actually launching onto God like he's already out of mana. Nice twisted advance to get out of the way of all of the skill shots. Orbit Deception flashed out of the way of as well for that last tick. And God like is going to survive, but... They might have enough pressure now to take down his inner turret. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to get there, although you can't underestimate the wave clear coming out of mid-game, Corky. Able to clean that one up. And I just want to go back to the Insect kill because that was completely avoidable. All Insect had to do was walk on the other side of his minions. He had the yeah. minions coming through. Wouldn't have been able to get hit by that Dark Binding that was streaming through. So good play from Liam to nail that one. But if you know you were being chased and there are minions coming down your lane, Walk on the wall side, get away from the brushes, let the minions tank the skill shots, and then you can use all of your escape abilities once you pass the minion wave to make the last little push to your turret. Just not a great play coming out of Insect. I don't know. Protect the little minions. I mean, they're, they're not that strong. Just, you know, you're a big horse. Depends what your priorities are. Yeah, that's true. But Insect, he does like to save the little guys as he kills one of the little guys on the map. So oh, maybe that's not true. Though. Trust me, <laughs> Gromp is not little. That guy <laughs> slaps. <laughs> Gromp, public enemy number one for any jungler out there. I just don't think that you like NPCs. I think that's what it is. NPC hater. Although, bottom lane now, Wushin does find himself some free farm here. Is 9CS in the lead? Does have an extra couple of kills here as well over Name. In fact, the extra death at the same time. So definitely has been involved in a lot of just general stuff. But Name, of course, wants to make it to that late stage of the game. 
Almost has that Blade of the Ruin King completed. Going for the Luxury build, going for the Triforce into the Blade of the Ruin King. Nearly has that one faded up. Just the combined cost. And now 15 seconds. Good push in the top lane coming through. And MLXG looking for another engage. Yeah, pops that ultimate, of course. Already has quite a lot of CDR. That Warmog's completed here as well. Oh, the ultimate is going to run out there as the Empower Bowler comes through. But that's important. That's a very key cooldown. No one going to be able to get onto Name here. And they might be able to dictate the pace of this fight, recognizing that starting up the dragon straight away. Yeah, they even have the Rift Scuttler here as well as Royal Club taking a bit of d damage from this dragon, but it is going down incredibly quickly. King, they need to try and come in on this one. Of course, they really want to pick up their first. It is going to be Insect that takes it down, and MLXG going to get to his advance. That is a single man shockwave onto the very tanky ML MLXG, and King might have an opportunity to re-engage, but Royal Club say, nope. We don't want to fight this. Yeah, single man shockwave onto a War Mog's Rengar. You're never going to be able to take him out just because they burnt that ultimate, not going to be able to defend the mid turret. So that one will fall down relatively quickly. Trading of objectives there. Insect might look to go in for the fight. No, decides to not pull the trigger. And I think they need to save that cooldown to make sure they can deal with Woosh on this Callista. Yeah, and Royal Club, I mean, it's a nice pickup of that second dragon. Third. Third dragon, sorry. So actually getting some movement speed here as well. It's a little bit more important as far as that dragon is concerned. And King wanted to pick up their first, but they're continuing to get more map pressure. Yeah, they certainly are getting more map pressure, but opening up the map against someone that wants to farm like Name isn't even necessarily that good of a thing unless you can get a huge gold advantage. 3,000, 25 minutes in, nothing to scoff at. So King definitely playing this mid game extremely well, but bleeding objectives like that against a late game team, at least 12 minutes from now, there is a real threat of five dragons coming through for a team fighting Starhorn Royal Club. They need to be able to get the next one. Yeah, so they're going to hit their power spikes and get a fifth dragon at the same time. That is pretty terrifying if you're a king member, but this top lane out of turret, that one's going to be the focus. King sort of dropping the ball on that one, just letting that one, that one fall down. The last out of turret in the ring does fall for Royal Club, so a little bit more global gold now for these guys. And the reason I like the Hecarim pick up here with the teleport is for exactly what uh, Insect is doing right now. He is a second split pushing option, can go deal with waves and has that teleport available. Very tanky at the moment, has picked up that MR in the Spirit Visage coming through. Helps out with his W of course as well, so gives him a little bit more. As Baron gets very mad at Lamb and nearly kills him. Yeah, that was very scary. Oh, Sky coming through the protection play there as well with the Whimsy Shield, but... Doesn't actually grab it in time, and it's just going to create some pretty colors around here. Zero actually getting caught out here, maybe a little bit from MLXG. Does get Polymorph at the same time. So much lockdown CC on a single target from King, and they do get the pick they're looking for. Yeah, and just no uh, wards to teleport to. That was very good denial of vision. I thought that going on to Zero was a little bit ambitious, but he's gone for a very squishy build for his Leona. Actually picking up that... Uh, Mikhail's, Mikhail's Crucible. Crucible trying to keep Name a little bit safer and that meant that he wasn't tanky enough to survive all the damage. Fantastic layering of CC coming through though from King. Yeah, really beautiful. Sky looking so comfortable Teleport on in the mid lane. Lulu. Actually, teleport coming through from Insect here as well. Doesn't have the home guards as Assassin just flashes out of the way of the Onslaught of Shadows, throws his Orb of Deception in the wrong direction and runs away. Yeah, but that is a very key pick up, being able to grab the flash, although ultimate, of course, on Ari still is very useful. Means that she just has to play a little bit more careful. Harder to dodge out of those shockwaves. So up to a whoosh as well as Assassin to be able to split in these team fights, not get caught on top of each other. Yeah, that's true. That is going to be the teleport on cooldown here, though. For insects, so none of these double teleports are going to be coming down for the next five minutes. Or so. They're just looking to group at the moment. They're farming, a, uh, channeling a lot of the farm onto Name. He's been able to grab that Blade of the Ruin King. So he's two items in because of the mixed damage. That last whisper that has been completed by Wook won't really mean that much to Name. Of course, it's a fantastic item to have, but doesn't really need it on Corky. And see what he goes through with his third item. Does he go the Bloodthirst to get the double? Vamp coming through just to keep him extremely safe in these team fights because you feel if the Ari doesn't catch him, not much burst potential to really lock him down and get rid of him. So if he does go with that double life steal, has a good chance of surviving with that shield. Yeah, not to mention the fact that he doesn't really mind missing out on that Infinity Edge just because he doesn't naturally build that much crit. Yeah, so unless he does go for a little bit more crit, of course, there's some on the Trinity Force, so it's not a horrible item. Yeah. Oh, Thriller Hunt has been popped here, though. MLXG looking to find someone in the jungle. It may actually run out here as Royal Club just seem to know where MLXG is this game. Yeah, and you saw maybe a little bit of the protect the Callista composition came out. The Black Shield as well as the Whimsy in the Shield came through from the Lulu. And 
That was a very tanky Callista at this point in the game. Yeah. He's looking like King setting up something for a potential Baron. We do have that pink ward there, Royal Club, with no vision around that area at all. Sort of a difficulty of being the red side, that river area in the front of Baron, a little bit more difficult to get to, but you can always sneak some wards over the back of that Baron pit. And Wishin. I think he may have just uh, misclicked the ward in the back of the pit. Yep. <laughs> is able to clear it out the second time around, though, and we see if we take another look at the items, it will be the last Whisper that comes through for Name next. Has finished up that pickaxe. We see that the three items already done for Woosh, so maybe he's a little bit further ahead. On the other side of the rift, Assassin 303. Haven't really touched on, but he's having a stellar game at the moment. 2,000 gold ahead. Yeah, he just finished that Rabidon's death cap as well, so a big spike in power. Yeah, definitely, but is still squishy. Doesn't have the Zonya's Hourglass that we normally do see around this point in the game. And still not the Void Star finished up by Korn, so won't be the big damage threat he hopes to be. Providing a lot of utility, but still not really going to be as effective at this point. And we're going in. Yeah, they're launching themselves onto Korn here as well. He just gets immediately obliterated. MLXG now in the focus fire as Insect uses his ult a little bit defensively at the same time. Assassin in through the backside. Name forced out of this fight here as well. The charm lands onto zero as the Xenoblade comes through and it's a double kill for Wuxian. Insect dies at the same time. Beautiful play from King. And MLXG's Rengar is so good. Yeah, it certainly is. And you have to question why it wasn't banned away. They see they're starting up the Baron. So Name doesn't even have time to go by. We'll have to just give this one up. They're going to look to trade the Dragon for it and try and grab number four, but a Baron for Dragon 4, not really worth it. No, although King probably wanted to get those extra 6% stats, especially now that they're padding them with this Baron here just a little bit. King have already moved over to this Dragon. It's not going down nearly as fast. Of course, Stalin Royal Club only with a couple of members. There's the Ventral Maelstrom as well. Assassin does have the option of coming in here. Is he going to steal it? He is! Steals the first Dragon for King. Name over the backside. And Wuxian now just going to clean up Godlike. Name does escape, I believe. As far as the Choose Your Own Adventure. Yes! Gets out of there. Sky's going to ult just for fun. But of course, with 40% CDR, that one's going to be back very soon. Yeah, and they grab a 7,000 gold advantage and a dragon to stop the bleeding. That was really the best that Royal Club could have hoped for, grabbing that dragon off the back of the lost team fight. Don't get it. And now King have all the tools. If this game doesn't go for another 10 minutes, they're in a fantastic position to win. You look at how tanky MLXG is, not to mention the fact Rabidon's death cap was finished off in the top lane for Sky. Wild Growth going to come through. Be extremely effective and Callista now with the three items, another 1500 gold, picks up another zeal as well as a QSS Atlas. My goodness. Woosh is terrifying. Woosh is going to be tearing people apart. And now that that QSS has come through, no more stray solar flares to lock him down. We've got a Mikhail's already finished for Liam as well. And this Callista comp with the Black Shields, with the Wild Growth, seems to be working out beautifully for King. Yeah, it certainly has had a hard time in the laning phase. We saw the Insect gank really did turn that lane back around, but late game, Callista still just such a threat. And last team fight, Korn didn't get his ultimate off. That cannot happen if Starhorn Royal Club hope to win a fight. They really need all their members layering that CC, being able to take the Callista out. And now they just have to seed objectives. Yep, sieging up this inner turret. And the thing that I absolutely love about this King uh, sort of lineup and, and sort of how they've built this comp is that it's a pick comp built around a Callista comp at the same time. It's sort of both of them working out fantastically because, of course, you've got Dark Binding and Powered Bowlers. You've got Charms coming through. So much pick potential. But then when they're in a team fight, they can just build up Woosh and he can get gigantic and kill everyone. Yeah, we're certainly seeing that. So it really is up to MLXG to get the fight going because no one can really take him out. Force everyone to collapse around MLXG and then it is just build the Callista up, make sure that she's got the movement speed as well as all the shields coming through and just hammering out damage. The attack speed build with a Lulu is just so much more effective because you're going to yeah. have that help picks on top of you doing even more damage. And you see, once again, Rengar coming through with the ultimate looking for another team fight. Yeah, looking to pick something off or at least just guarantee this turret here on the bottom side. Just pops through all the hunt and uses it a little bit like you would a Rek'Sai. So 
She's got her tremor sense. You can sense people coming. But of course, you pop your ultimate every now and again, and MLXG is able to detect people coming as well. Yeah, you can see everyone in the vicinity. And that means now a 10,000 gold lead for Royal Club. So we've seen them play from behind with Name. Not Did this it far behind very so successfully, far. but not this far behind and not against a team that still looks like it's hitting its stride. Still no Zonia's Hourglass coming through. It's not a six item AD carry yet. They will peter out as a lot of Lulu compositions do do, but still in a very good spot. Yeah, and I'm, I've just been so impressed by MLXG's play this game. I haven't been all that wowed by MLXG just recently, but the fact that he's stuck to his guns, he's continued playing this Rengar no matter what, and he's just looking so good this game. Yeah, he certainly is. Important pickup for uh, Insect coming through. He has finished up the Frozen Heart, so he's going to be able to deal a little bit more successfully with the uh, Kalista in the back line. And they need to be able to stop the Steeds coming through. We mentioned the fact that they were on track for about a 40-minute Fifth Dragon. That's been pushed out a little bit to about 45 minutes now. So they need to be careful, need to keep funneling farm onto Name, get him a little bit further ahead. He's about an item and a half behind at the, this moment and really can't do much in the team fights. Yeah, and sort of going for a late game situation when you're a Corky against a Callista just doesn't seem like a fun prospect at all anyway. But this is, of course, Name. We're not going to discount him just because his late game positioning just in general is fantastic. But positioning doesn't really matter if your whole team dies. Yeah, and that's what's been happening. So we'll see if they can survive. Godlike also picking up the Frozen Heart. He's a little bit tanky in now. Needs to be able to... And, and I say this a lot about compositions pl uh, playing against Rengar. If Rengar's the one picking the engages, you're going to lose nine times out of ten. Because he provides all the information he needs, can get onto priority targets. They need Godlike coming up with the engage. They need to be looking for flanks with the Hecarim, getting the ball in there, and making sure Korn, who now has his three items, so is a legitimate damage threat, is dealing with Wuxian. The team fights that they won, the picks that they got, were when the Shockwave was hitting the AD carry, and it's yeah. very hard to do now because of all the items that have come through, but that is the situation they need to be aiming for. Oh my goodness. One minute to Dragon. You've got the Zonya's hour Hourglass now completed. Sky has the Void Staff. You've got a Phantom Dancer now on top of everything that Wush already had. Just has to finish off that Mercurial Scimitar, and he's got a six-item Callista. There's some huge item spikes being hit for King, and this next dragon fight could be explosive and looking dangerous for Royal Club. Yeah, it certainly is, and more importantly, all the level 16s coming through as well. Level 17 on the two solo laners, level 16 in for Wuxian, so they all have their ultimates there ready to be used, whereas on the other side of the rift, you see level 15 on both Cola as well, uh, uh, Korn, as well as Godlike. So not going to be able to have that level three ultimate for reducing the damage, and they're looking to fight. Yeah, actually, MLXG, he's flashed on top of Korn here as well as Assassin gets the charm in there. Zero off to the side, can't manage to find too much. Black Shield doing some work, helping MLXG. Assassin over the wall now as well as Name gets hit by that orb. But it is going to be King with the disengage. Sky actually blew his ultimate there in the top side as Insect almost died to the Lulu 1v1. There are a couple of teleports still available. Godlike can come back in here as well. Black Shield, uh, Dark Binding, sorry, going to land onto him. Insect's got the flank. He does. He's coming in there. Just runs towards the dragon. They really want to pick up their fourth. The yeah, MLXG jumps through. Doesn't manage to get it. And he just gets collapsed on by Royal Club King. They might have to get the heck out of here as well. There's the Soul Shackles from Liam. But he's going to get punished for it. A double kill now for Name Wushin. He's launching himself around the fight. Might be a little bit too deep, but no! Manages to get in there. That is a first pick up here as Sky is starting to rocket through this one. Clean up Lulu, the janitor himself, as Insect is forced to run away. And that was looking dangerous, but King, they come out ahead. Yeah, they're able to pick up the team fight win on the probably best situation that Royal Club could have hoped for, but they got rid of the tank. They got rid of the support. No one able to get on these damage threats, and Sky has turned into a monster late game. Oh, yeah. Pumping out the damage as well as all the protection for Wuxian. He's nearly six items in his own right, and all of them offensive. This has been some of the most impressive top lane Lulu play that we've seen so far in the LPL. 3-1-10. and 10. He's 100 CS in the lead, and he just allowed Wuxian to run over that fight and then cleaned everyone up afterwards. Insect, he's going to find a little bit of a bowler strike here as well as he's going to get stunned a little bit during his ultimate, but of course he's dead. Onslaught of Shadows is going to help you out here, MLXG. Not sure what... Oh, yep. Okay, the, the Mega Collapse is going to come through here. And Glitterlands to secure the kill. And Sky just 
Dances along out of the way. And that's when Baron's up. So maybe he should have just died with the rest of his team because now another free Baron going to be looked to be picked up by the King lineup. And Name, oh, needs to be careful. Nearly got picked there by the charm coming through. And they can't really contest. Yeah, how are you supposed to? I mean, Wush is just stabbing it with so many of these spears. They're going to be torn out for about 3,000 damage. You can see that was actually 1,000 that he decided to take that one on. No steal potential coming through. Second Baron now for King. And Royal Club, I mean, you've almost got all of their eggs in that fifth dragon basket. They have locked down the fourth. And it might just be that that's what they need in order to get here. Of course, a couple of Siege Minions smashing. Oh, look at this Glitter Lance. That was so beautiful to watch. That was one of the best moments that we've had so far. And you say you like protecting NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> the true form comes out hey, how, towards how you, the end game. How do you know that Glitter Lance actually kills creeps? They might just because be of taken the to another beautiful above his head. place. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the ticket. It's the ticket money. When you're Lulu, how can you be that sort of adorable champion and not be doing just great things to everyone? Turns people into little, like, munchkins. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. We do have a slight lull, though, ladies and gentlemen, as we wait for this Baron to kick in, of course. Need All to three get waves those being pushed, pushed up pushing. simultaneously there. And we see they're trying to clear out as much vision as possible. Don't want to let Royal Club know where they are. Arm guard finished up now by Korn. Feel that that Zonya's Hourglass might have even need been needed before the death cap because he's been picked a few times in the last couple of fights. And Godlike really not having the game that we expected out of him. 120 CS behind Sky and has just been dictated to throughout the entirety of the game. Got Dove, lost his turret early, and just not this huge tank that they need. Probably needs a Warmogs on there just for the immediate effect of all that health. And I don't know what a winning team fight at this point in the game looks like for Royal Club. There's just too many weapons on King's lineup. Well, judging by the scoreline, it looks like a team fight that Lamb isn't involved in. He's been involved in 17 out of the 19 kills now for King. Really incredible performance, especially considering a slightly extended laning phase where he was just in that bottom side. It's just had such an impact on this game. 8, 3, and 5 now for Woosh here as well. And Look at the solo lanes. 4, 1, and 10. 4, 0, and 10. Just such solid performances across the board for King. Yeah, certainly is. And now they're pushing in with that Baron. They're going to be able to pick up the turret nearly uncontested here. That Siege Minion at the back just doing so much work. Oh my goodness. Godlike actually getting picked out here and not looking quite as tanky as he wants to be at this stage of the game. It is going to be the turret being focused down. Assassin picks up the last kill of that one. And Royal Club, there is nothing that they can do. They cannot push against this team. Super Creeps already entering the base via that mid lane. And Royal Club now, they're going to have to pray for a miracle to get back in in this one. Yeah, so the good news is they get all the farm they want. Bad news is their base is in shambles. Yep. And they really need to be able to push out in the next minute and a half to get that fifth dragon. The whole game probably rests on it now, so they need to push up. They need to be able to get some wards out there. But you see the home guards coming through, streaming out of the base was MLXG. He just wants to secure control over that area. And if they pick up the next dragon, they'll just look to push in on the bottom lane and win the game. Yeah, Sky, six items. Assassin, six items. Wushin now, six items. You've got three and a sort of couple of halves of an item. So I guess four items here for Name. We'll give him that one. And look, you've only got sort of three and a half now for Korn here at the same time. Looking really, really scary for our Royal Club side just because King, they've leveled up completely in this game. 16,000 gold is now the lead. Thrill of the Hunt's being popped. Look at how fast this Rengar is. Actually manages to find zero, but just after he gets through that base gate, and that is a very, very big ringer. That certainly is. And 800 AP on both top and mid lane as Assassin That's and insane. Sky. And their defensive items aren't even defensive items as they're going in. Yeah, this, there are Abyssal Scepters that are coming through. And Zonya's Hourglass still giving respectable amounts of AP and offensive statistics. Very, very... They have copied each other in the build, though. I think that Assassin or Sky need to switch over their boots just so that they can be proper twins here on the Rift, but of course, that's just horses for courses. Speaking of horses, yeah. Hecarim in the top lane, <laughs> still <laughs> split pushing. Insects given up on the team fights, and it looks like they've given up control of the dragon, so that one going to fall very rapidly, but they're looking for the fight. they just using this to try and get Royal Club out of their base. Royal Club abandon it, and King, they'll take it away. 
Yep, easy pick up on this dragon. And that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Just because you, they had the inhibitors down. They couldn't deal with the super creeps at that particular moment. And they were opting in for a fight in the dark here as well. And they haven't been working out so well. I think Royal Club, they need to make sure that they can get exactly the fight that they want if there's any hope for them. And they don't want to throw away any sort of opportunistic advantages here for King. Yeah, so now they're pushing in on the mid inhibitor. Insect finished up his Thorn Mail, so he's extremely tanky. Zero looking for an engage. Yeah, there's a Solar Flare onto a couple of members here as well as Insect comes through. Is the Solar Flare, the Shockwave going to be massive? There it is, lands onto Assassin, immediately deletes him as King. Now trying to kite around Wushin. A little bit off to the backside. Wild Growth onto MLXG as well. He's so tanky, soaking so much of this damage as Sky taking some of the focus here as well. Wushin still untouched on the backside as MLXG able to jump through. Sky so so fast, Name though is able to close the distance as Wushin jumping around does manage to pick up the kill into court. A double kill now for Wushin. Name is still alive at the same time. That is three now to one, and Wushin trying to escape that. Marshall Poi is not quite managing to get it, and the ace somehow for Royal Club. And how do they do it? They are such a good team fighting team. Zero getting the perfect engage through once again. Patience Shockwave using it as a CC tool. Got uh, Ari in her second dash of her ultimate, able to blow up Assassin, and that's with a massive item discrepancy across the board. Now the Infinity Edge being picked up by Name. He's nearly at the six items. Top lane, Maokai, finally, even though he's 120 CS and 1, 5, and 11, he's nearly at six items as well. And if this game goes a little bit longer, Atlas, if they continue to hold out and stall, if they keep performing like that, that's... There's no way that they lose a team fight with that level of coordination. Yeah, if this is what the team fights look like from now on, there's sort of no way that Royal Club are going to be losing it. But we have seen King, if they manage to get the fight on their terms, that's when it works out. But that was Royal Club engaging. And this is something that you've brought up over and over again. King, they look good when they get picks and they start with the picks. They don't look good when they're sieging a turret, but in the end of the game, that's what you have to do. Yeah, every member of Royal Club is integral to being able to win the team fight. So as soon as one of those members is taken away by a very good Rengar ultimate, then it's just impossible for them to do it. However, in saying that, if... Ooh. Oh, the charm lands on Insect here as well. Foxfire doing a whole bunch of damage after that charm. Lame and Assassin just waiting yet again. Double inhibitors are still down, ladies and gentlemen. So King still with a massive advantage here on the Rift. And with Baron spawning yet again, they might have another opportunity to actually siege through. As MLX is just gonna jump over the wall there at the same time. Yeah, he leaps extremely far and we see Godlike in the base trying to deal with those minions and MLXG popping the ultimate. Yeah, there's Thrill of the Hunt as well. Look at how fast he is, manages to make it in onto Zero Corn, immediately pops that Zonya's Hourglass here at the same time, flashing over the wall. Name facing off against Assassin, Blade of the Rune King there. Godlike forces out the Zonya's here at the same time as Name looking to try and get something done. Godlike gets caught there, but Assassin just gets blown up. Name's dead on the backside. Wushin somehow still alive. Korn makes his way back into the fight. MLXG manages to make Korn do the... I mean, Godlike do the most ridiculous set of movements there on this Maokai. Wushin getting locked down, but the Mercurials is there. And is Godlike now finally going to fall the rend? Not quite enough. Krug, please help. No, he's not going to do it. Not this time. Super creeps on the base, though. And with Godlike almost dead, you have to think this could be game for King. Yeah, and once again, popping the Zonya's Hourglass. A lot of defensive flashes away. MLXG getting the team fight he te his team needs. And Wuxian not going down. That'll mean the win for King. And they look fantastic. But in the late game, Starhorn looks pretty good. Yeah, that was just a beautifully exec executed game from King, but Star and Royal Club managed, when they did what their comp was good at, showed that they can make it work. It was just so close towards the end there, despite what the gold lead was saying. Yeah, certainly, and they were up huge, and you have to really hand it for King for picking a mid-game composition, understanding the Lulu, understanding yeah. the Rengar, and getting the fights that their team comp demanded of them. MLXG, 3-3 A-team, really was the star for me. Wushin, of course, had a fantastic game in the top lane. You can't speak enough about Sky, but that Rengar play was absolutely beautiful to watch. And you have to think, if Insect doesn't want to first pick it, it has to go for the next game. Yeah, well, that's true. And MLXG's played it now in his last three, four games, something like that. Just get rid of it because he's so comfortable and able to start the fights that King are used to fighting here at the same time. This is where they look good. And 
you just can't allow that to happen. Yeah, you certainly can't. They had a great mid-game performance and looking forward to seeing whether they can do it again. Yeah, speaking of them doing it again, doing it again ladies and gentlemen, Game 2 is coming up very soon between King and Royal Club.